tower. The original clock tower for the Super Nintendo. Man, I, I wish some major developer like Capcom... And they, they took the rest of Clock Tower and they made Clock Tower 3, which is okay. Um, they also did Haunting Ground. I'm sure some people are know what Haunting Ground is. Uh, which was like a spiritual successor to Clock Tower. Uh, Haunting Ground was pretty good. I, I really liked it. I liked it better than Clock Tower... What was it? Clock Tower 3? Uh, Clock Tower 3 was mediocre. Um, my first uh, Clock Tower game was Clock Tower for the PlayStation, which was uh, just called Clock Tower. And then there's Clock Tower for the Super Nintendo, which again is just called Clock Tower. They're two different games, though. The best one is the one for the Super Nintendo. The one for PlayStation is good. I don't know if it's as scary or it's scarier, but it scared the crap out of me when I first played it. But I certainly think that you could remake the first one. And anyone who's played Clock Tower will probably agree with me on this, is that you can definitely recreate that game to a standard that will scare the living shit out of people. And for the folks like me who just want to relive that game in a new light i would be more than willing to actually like fund a game like that kickstarter anything i would throw my goddamn money at them but yes do this i've been waiting all my life for this i've been waiting the last 20 or 15 years to see them finally do this and i think they will eventually um but I don't know how soon because they seem to be make, remaking a lot of games. <clears throat> I don't know if I'd prefer the, the same company, Human Entertainment, to remake it because I don't think they're a company anymore. It could get picked up by a different major developer. And I do think Capcom still has the IP to it because they did buy the rights off them. And they kind of, you know, they made their own game. They made a Capcom game, unfortunately. I mean, really did not resemble Clock Tower. Uh, Haunting Grounds resembled Clock Tower a little bit more than Clock Tower 3 did, which is kind of funny. But Haunting Grounds was its own game. Um, was not a Clock Tower game. It was its own game, and Clock Tower 3 was definitely its own game. It just had Clock Tower in the title. But uh, Clock Tower, to me is clock tower for the super nintendo and clock tower for the playstation you have clock tower 2 which is made by human entertainment as well but there's no scissor man i don't know if it's even any of the same characters clock tower 2 for the ps x was a failure it bombed i never had a chance to play it i might go back and emulate it someday but i hear it sucks so i don't know if i'll bother but since clock tower 2 flopped they sold the rights to Capcom because they couldn't do anything with it anymore. So I think the company has disbanded, but it would still be a great opportunity for a developer to pick it up. And if Capcom picked it up and just looked at the original game for the PlayStation for the Super Nintendo, and they just went off that, they could make something amazing. But I doubt they're going to do that. And I think if a company is going to do it. They have to get the rights to it. Almost certain that those rights are still in the hands of Capcom, which is the problem. And Capcom is one of my favorite companies. But obviously, there's some things that Capcom does that I disagree with. But I think they should absolutely give the rights to a developer who wants to take it under his or her company's wing and do it. And make it exactly just like the Super Nintendo version. I think that would do a world of justice for anyone who plays survival horror games. If anyone is an old school survival horror fanatic like I am, then you know of Clock Tower. You know all about Clock Tower. I mean, it is a bit of a, like, 
you're not in the club until you played clock tower and until you fully appreciate clock tower then you're officially in the survival horror club if you don't appreciate clock tower you're you're not like a top ranking survival horror fanatic like i am okay you have to appreciate clock tower like um <clears throat> It's just a staple to the survival horror community that does not get enough respect. Um, because it was one of the first survival horror games, and arguably, arguably, it was the first survival horror game. Um, I don't know if it came before Alone in the Dark. I think Alone in the Dark did come first. Um, and they're remaking Alone in the Dark. They're doing that, so why can't they do it with a uh, clock tower? That's, you know, that's the big question for me. It's like, if you're going to do it for alone in the dark... Isaac Clark, systems engineer. Engineer? Have you seen Jacob Temple? I haven't, but I'm looking for someone, too. Dr. Nicole Brennan. Dr. Brennan? Doesn't she help people leave unitology? Yeah, like my mother. That's how we met. I hope she's okay. The Unitologists here didn't like anyone questioning them. And since the captain died, they've all... snapped. But for anyone who's watching and you haven't played Clock Tower, um... The best thing you can do is get a English translation for... Uh... The Super Nintendo ROM, which is all over the internet. Um, it's not illegal. The only thing that's illegal is distributing the game, I believe. I don't know the, the laws to downloading ROMs and emulating them. I think it's a, a real gray area. Especially with games that are so old that the developers clearly don't have the rights to or even care about anymore. I wouldn't be too afraid. Just don't distribute it. Don't give it to anyone. That is something illegal. Um, but still, that's a gray area, too, because if it were completely and entirely legal, they wouldn't allow all these websites to do it. And it's not technically piracy anymore. There's loopholes. But I don't endorse it, but I'm saying virtually there's no way of getting to have the Clock Tower experience without having to do that. Because the first Clock Tower game was in Japanese, so there is no English cartridge version Neither is, you know, any cartridges for the Super Nintendo even available for under $200. They're all over $200 at this point. <clears throat> um, and extremely scarce. So there is no other way of playing this game. I mean, you can YouTube it and watch a playthrough if you're really, you know, not up for it. And you, you're not uh, privy on the idea of doing the whole emulation thing. But that takes, ooh, excuse me, that takes a lot of the experience out of it. And you could do the same for the clock tower on the PlayStation, which is, in my mind, almost equally just as good of a game. Um, maybe not as original. Or uh, I, I can't remember. They're both pretty shocking. That's that's the thing. They're both pretty shocking. And clock tower for the Super Nintendo. Is very shocking because it's a Super Nintendo game. You can't believe this shit is even going on. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest part that shocked me about it. It's like, are you, they're doing this in a Super Nintendo game? I mean, you're so used to seeing Mario run around kicking a fucking turtle and riding on a, you know, little green uh, lizard dinosaur thing. Like, this is stuff you're entirely, you're seeing like girls being impaled with a giant pair of scissors and, and thrown through fucking windows like a a woman hanging in a bathtub because she's just been murdered like so many death scenes in the game there's actually blood in it too um i mean i think it was the first mature rated game and it's a super nintendo game have you seen a super nintendo game that has a mature rating no, you haven't. You haven't until you've seen Clock Tower. But I don't know if they had the rating system back then. So I've talked a lot. I don't mean to... to uh, harangue people about Clock Tower. But I will always put the word of Clock Tower out there. Because I want that game to get more love. I think it deserves way more love. Um, I think John Tron did a video on it. And of course he shat all over it. It's just like, really? 
but he's more of like a mainstream like sort of a what do they call those creators on YouTube um the ones that are like all sponsored and stuff like that you know the ones that don't have like edgy opinions or really speak their mind they just they say the popular thing like I think you know that's typically what you're going to get out of like uh, the big time YouTubers uh is they're going to have opinions that are more mainstream you know so he kind of makes made fun of the game um there's plenty of other people out there like uh, alpha omega sin is someone who i've followed quite a bit and he praises the game because he's a huge survival horror fanatic uh so you can check i think he has videos on it and you, most of you probably know who alpha omega sin is i would definitely check out this video on clock tower i think he did do one or two um but he's also a survival horror fanatic, so he has respect for the game. I don't think John Tron is a survival horror fan, so that's why, you know. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> God damn it. 